the story of Orpheus and Eurydice. A young man, Orpheus, and a young woman, Eurydice. Orpheus makes a sweeping gesture with his arm, indicating the sky. All those birds? Thank you. And the sea for me? When? Orpheus opens his hands. Now it's, it's mine already? Wow. He indicates the sky. Surely not, surely not the sky and the stars too. Yes, and yes. That's very generous. I don't think so. Perhaps too generous? <laughs> oh my God, no. Thank you. What are you thinking about? Music. How do you think about music? You either hear it or you don't. Well, then I'm hearing it. Oh. I, um, I read a book today. Did you? Yes, it was very interesting. Th that's good. Don't you want to know what it was about? Of course. Well, there were stories about people's lives, how some come out well and others come out badly. Did you love the book? Yes, I, I think so. Why? Well, it can be interesting to see if people, like dead people who wrote books, agree or disagree with what you might think. And why is that? Well, because it makes you a larger part of the human community. It had very interesting arguments. Hmm. And interesting arguments are good ones? Well, yes. Huh. I never thought of it that way. I always thought they had to be right or wrong. Well, these particular arguments were very interesting. <laughs> well, maybe you should make up your own thoughts instead of having to read them out of your book. I, I, I do. I do think up my own thoughts. Um, I, I didn't mean like that. I just, I, I just love how you love books. Um, please, please don't be mad at me. I wrote you a song today. Uh, did you? Yes. It's not interesting and it's not not interesting. It just is. Will you sing it for me? It has too many parts. <laughs> Let's go in the water. They start walking arm in arm on extensive unseen boardwalks towards the water. Wait, just, just remember this melody. He hums a bar of melody. I'm bad at remembering melodies. Why don't you remember it? I have 11 of them in my head. With this one, it's a total of 12. Let's try it one more time. Got it? I think so. Let's hear it then. Okay. She sings the melody. <laughs> she misses a few notes. She's not the best singer in the world. That was good. Uh-huh. Um, your, your rhythm was off by a little bit. Okay. Let's clap it out. She claps. He claps the rhythmic sequence for her. Let me help you. Oh. She tries to imitate. She is still off. That's it, right? We'll practice. <laughs> I don't need rhythm anyways. I have my books. Don't books have rhythm? Well, kind of. Let's go in the water. Hmm. Wait, even if you are under the water, will you still remember my melody? Yes, I will always remember your melody. It will be imprinted on my heart, like wax. Thank you. You're welcome. So when are you going to play me the whole song? When I get 12 instruments. Where are you going to get 12 instruments? I'm going to make each strand of your hair into an instrument. Your hair will stand on and as it plays my music and becomes a hair orchestra, it will fly over to the sky. I don't know if I want to be an instrument. Why not? Well, won't I fall down when the song ends? That's true. Uh, but the clouds will be so moved by your music that they will flow with water and become very heavy and then you sit on one and then you float gently back down to earth. How about that? Okay. <laughs> 
They gaze at each other. Then it's settled. What is? Your hair will be my orchestra, and that I, I love you. I love you too. How, how will you remember? That I love you? Yes. That's easy. I can't help it. You never know. I better tie a string around your uh, finger in case you forget. <laughs> is there a string at the ocean? I always carry a string on me in case I come upon a broken instrument. He takes out a string from his pocket. He takes her left hand. <laughs> he ties string deliberately around her fourth finger. So how are you today? Um, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, almost there. Um, almost got it. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. There. Is that too tight? No, it's it's perfect. Mwah. There. Now you won't forget. That's a that's a very particular finger. I know. <laughs> You're aware. Yeah. How aware? Yeah. <laughs> Orpheus, are are we? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. Yes, I I think so. You, you think so? No, no, I I wasn't thinking. I I meant yes. Y yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Oh. He picks her up and throws her into the sky. Maybe you can give me another ring, a gold one, to go over the string one. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. Do you still have my melody? Yes, it's right here. She points to her temple. They look at each other. A silence. What are you thinking about? Musica. Me encanta la musica. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about you. And... Poquito musica. Let's go in the water. I'll um, I'll race you. Oh, I'll race you. I'll race you, and I'll, I'll race win. you. I'm gonna win. We race towards the water. Already beat You're you. Losing. No, no, no. Already at the door. Oh, you did not. You lost. In the underworld, the father reads from a letter. Dear Eurydice, a letter for you on your wedding day. There's no choice of any importance in life but the choosing of a beloved. I've met Orpheus, but he seems like a serious young man. I understand he's a musician. If I were to give a speech at your wedding, I would start with one or two funny jokes. And then I might offer some words of advice. <clears throat> I would say, cultivate the arts of dancing and small talk. Everything in moderation. Court the companionship and their respective dogs. Grilling a fish or toasting bread requires singleness of purpose, vigilance, and steadfast watching. Keep quiet about politics, but vote for the right man. To care to change the light bulbs. Continue to give yourself to others because that's the ultimate satisfaction in life to love, accept, honor, and help others. As for me, this is what it's like being dead. The atmosphere smells, and there are strange, high-pitched noises, like a tea kettle always boiling over. But it doesn't seem to bother anyone, and for the most part, there's a pleasant atmosphere where you can work and socialize, much like at home. I'm working in the business world, and it seems that here, you can better see the far-reaching consequences of your actions. Also, I'm one of the few dead people who still knows how to read and write. That's a secret. If anyone finds out, they might dip me in the river again. I, I write you letters. I don't know how to get them to you. Love, your father. He drops the letter as though into a mail slot. It falls to the ground. In the underworld, the father walks in a straight line as though he is walking his daughter down the aisle. He is affectionate, then solemn, then glad, then solemn, then amused, then Solemn. He looks at his imaginary daughter. 
he looks straight ahead. He acknowledges the guests at the wedding. He gets choked up. He looks at his daughter and smiles an embarrassed smile for getting choked up. He looks straight ahead, calm. He walks. Suddenly, he checks his watch. He leaves in a hurry. Eurydice, sitting by a fountain. The noise of a party from far off. I hate parties. And a wedding party is the biggest party of all. All the guests have arrived and Orpheus is taking a shower. He's always taking a shower when the guests arrive so that he doesn't have to greet them, but then I have to greet them. A wedding is for fathers and daughters. All the mothers, they try to dress up like young women, but a wedding is for fathers and daughters, and they stop being married to each other on that day. I always thought I'd have more interesting people at my wedding. A man wearing a trench coat, appears. Are you a homeless person? No. Oh, on my way to a party where there are very interesting people. Would you like to join me? Uh, no, I just left my own party. You were having your own party and you just left? I, I was thirsty. You must be a very interesting person to leave your own party like that. Thank you. You mustn't care at all what other people think of you. And I think that's a mark of a very interesting person, don't you? I guess. So would you like to accompany me to this interesting affair? Uh, no, I, I've just gotten married, you see. Oh, lots of people do that. Th th that's true, lots of people do. What's your name? Eurydice. He looks at her, hungry. Eurydice. Uh, goodbye then. <laughs> Goodbye. She leaves. He stands by the fountain. He notices a letter on the ground. He picks it up and reads it. Dear Eurydice. In the underworld, the father tries to remember how to do the jitterbug. He does the jitterbug with an imaginary partner. He has fun. Orpheus and Eurydice dance together at their wedding. They're happy. They have had champagne. They sing together. Lovers lane with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. With anyone else but me, no, 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 don't go walking down lover's lane with anyone else but me till I come marching home. I just got word from a guy who heard from the I'm warm, are you warm? <laughs> yes. I'm gonna get something to drink. No, come back, it's dance. Father pauses, <laughs> looks up as though he forgot something. He stops dancing. <sighs> okay. Don't, don't go. I'll be right back. Promise? I promise. I just can't bear to lose you today. <laughs> Silly goose. Don't sit under the apple tree. Eurydice by the fountain. Getting a glass of water. The interesting man appears. Y you're still here? Yes. I forgot to tell you something. I have a letter addressed to Eurydice. That's you from your father. That's not possible. He wrote down some thoughts for your wedding day. Let me see. I don't have it. It got delivered to my elegant high-rise apartment by mistake. Why didn't you say so before? You left in such a hurry. From my father? Yes. You're sure? Yes. I knew he'd send something. It'll just take a moment. I live right around the block. What an interesting dress you're wearing. Thank you.
You ready to see? You ready to see? The sound of a door closing. The interesting apartment, a giant loft space with no furniture. They enter. Voila. You're very high up. Yes, I am. I feel a little faint. It'll pass. Have you thought about installing an elevator? No, I prefer stairs. I think architecture is so interesting. Don't you? Um, yes. So where's the letter? But isn't this such an interesting building? It's so high up? Yes. There's... There's no one here. I thought you said you were having a party. I prefer to celebrate things more quietly with a few other interesting people. Don't you? She tilts her head to the side and stares at him. Would you like some champagne? Uh, maybe some water. Water it is. Make yourself comfortable. He gestures to the floor. She looks around. Can't stay long. She looks out the window. She is very high up. I could see my wedding from here. People look so small, they're all dancing. There's Orpheus. He's not dancing. So who's the guy you're marrying? His name is Orpheus. Orpheus, not an interesting name. I've heard it before. Maybe you've heard of him. He's kind of famous. He plays the most beautiful music in the world, actually. I can't hear you. Uh, so the letter was delivered here today? That's right. Through the post? It was mysterious. The sound of champagne popping. He enters with one glass of champagne. Voila. So, you ready to see? Tell me one thing. Name me one person you find interesting. Why? Just making conversation. Right, well, um, all the interesting people I know are either dead or speak French. Well, I don't speak French, Eurydice. He takes one step toward her. She takes one step back. I I'm sorry, I, I have to go. There's no letter, is there? Of course there's a letter. It's right here. He pats his breast pocket. Eurydice, I'm not interesting, but I'm strong. You could teach me to be interesting. I will listen. Orpheus is too busy in his own thoughts. Try to pluck the music out and it bites you. I bet you had an interesting thought today. She tilts her head to the side, quizzical. I bet you're always having them the way you tilt your head to the side and stare. She jerks her head back up. I, I feel dizzy all of a sudden. I, I want my husband. I think I'd better go now. You're free to go whenever you like. I know, I think I'll go now, in fact. But I'll just take my letter first, if you don't mind. She holds out her hand for the letter. He takes her hand. Relax. She takes her hand away. Goodbye. Wait, Eurydice, don't go. I love you. Oh, no. You need yourself a real man with broad shoulders like me. Orpheus has long fingers that will trim with a petal bull or pluck a bee from a hive. How do you know about my husband's fingers? A man who could put his big arms around your little shoulders as he leads you through the crowd a man who answers the door at parties. A man with big hands, big stupid hands like potatoes. A man who can carry a cow in labor. The man backs Eurydice against the wall. My lips were meant to kiss your eyelids, that's obvious. Close your eyes then. He closes his eyes, expecting a kiss. She takes the letter from his breast pocket. She slips under him and opens the door to the stairwell. He opens his eyes. She looks at the letter. It's his handwriting. Of course it is. He reaches for her. Uh, good goodbye She runs for the stairs. She wavers <laughs> off bounce at the top of a stairwell. Don't do that. You'll trip. She falls down the stairs. <gasps> oh, yes!
underworld. Strange watery noises. Drip, drip, drip. The movement to the underworld is marked by the, by the entrance of stones. stones. We, we are, are a chorus of stones. stones. I'm a little stone. I'm a big stone. I'm a loud stone. We are all stones. We live with the dead people in the land of the dead. Eurydice was a great musician. Orpheus was his wife. Orpheus was a great musician, and Eurydice was his wife. She died. Then he played the saddest music. Even we, the, the stones, stones, cried when we heard it. The sound of three drops of water hitting a pond. Oh, look. She's entering the land of the dead now. Oh. 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 We might say, poor Eurydice. But stones don't feel bad for dead people. Eurydice steps forward and opens her mouth, trying to speak. There is a great humming noise. She closes her mouth. The humming noise stops. She opens her mouth for a second time, attempting to tell her story. There is a great humming noise. She closes her mouth. The humming noise stops. She has a tantrum of despair. Eurydice wants to speak to you, but, but she can't speak your language anymore. She, she talks in the language of dead people now. It's a very quiet language. Like if the pores in your face opened up and talked. Like potatoes sleeping in the dirt. The stones look at Vic Stone as though that was a dumb thing to say. Pretend you understand her, or she'll be embarrassed. Yes, pretend for a moment that you understand the language of stones. Listen to her the way you would speak to your own daughter if she died too young and tried to speak to you across long distances. <laughs> there. It was a roar and a coldness. I think my husband was with me. What was my husband's name? M my husband's name. Do you know it? How strange. I don't remember. It was terrible to see his face when I died. His eyes were two black birds, and they flew to me. I said, no, stay where you are. He needs you in order to see. When I got through the cold, they made me swim in a river. And I forgot his name. I forgot all of the names. I know his name starts with my mouth, shaped like a ball of twine. Or, or, I forget. They took me in a tiny boat. I only just fit inside. I, I looked at the oars. I wanted to cry. I, I tried to cry, but I just drooled a little. I'll try now. <laughs> she tries to cry and finds that she can't. What happiness it would be to cry. I was not lonely, only alone with myself, begging myself not to leave my body, but I was leaving. How do you say goodbye to yourself? A train! The station is like a train, but there is no train. 
The train has wheels that are not wheels. There is the opposite of a wheel, and the opposite of smoke, and the opposite of a train. I'm waiting for someone to meet me, I think. Eurydice? At last, the porter to meet me. Do you happen to know where the bank is? You see, I've just arrived, and I need to exchange my money at the bureau to change. I didn't pack traveler's checks because I left in such a hurry. They didn't even let me pack my suitcase. It's empty, see? How funny. Oh, I suppose I could buy clothes here, and I'd really, really love a bath. Eurydice. What is that language you're speaking? It gives me tingles. Say it again. Eurydice. It's like a fruit. Say it again. Eurydice, I'm your father. <laughs> Eurydice, I'm your father. How funny. You know, you remind me of something, but I can't understand a word you're saying. Say it again. Your father. Shut, shut up! Shut, shut up! She doesn't understand you! She's dead now, too! You have to speak in the language of stones! You're dead now. I'm dead, too. Yes, I need a reservation for the fancy hotel. When you were alive, I was your father. Father is not a word dead people understand. He is what we call subversive. When you were alive, I was your tree. My tree, yes, oh, the tall one in the backyard. I used to sit all day in its shade. <gasps> ah, there, shade. There is a problem here. Is there any entertainment at the hotel? Any dancing ladies like with great big fans? I named you Eurydice. Your mother named all the other children, but Eurydice, I chose for you. Be careful, sir. Eurydice, I wanted to remember your name. I asked the stones. They said, forget the names. The names make you remember. We told you how it works! One day, do not stop raining. I heard your name inside the rain. Somewhere between the drops, I saw falling letters, each a letter of your name. I began to translate. E, I remembered elephants. U, I remembered ulcers and under. R, I remembered reindeer. I saw them putting their black noses in the snow. Y, youth and yellow. D, dog, dig, daughter, days. Time poured into my head. The days of the week, hours, months. The tree talks so beautifully. Don't, Don't listen! listen! I suddenly feel hungry. Where is the porter who met me at the station? Here I am. Oh, I'd like a continental breakfast, please. Maybe some rolls and butter uh, and jam. And could you take this to my room, if you would? I'm sorry, miss, but there are no rooms here. What? No, no rooms? Uh, where do people sleep? People don't sleep here. Oh. I have to say I'm very disappointed. It's been such a tiring day, and I've been traveling all day. First on a river, then on an elevator that rained, and, and then on a train, and I thought someone would meet me at the station. Don't, don't cry! cry. Don't, don't cry. cry! I don't know where I am, and, and th 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 there are these stones, and, and they're, they're terrible. I just want a bath, and I thought somebody would meet me at the station. Don't be sad. I'll take your luggage to your room. There, there are, are no, no rooms!
writes a letter to Eurydice. Dear Eurydice, I miss you. No, that's not enough. He crumples up the letter. He writes a new letter. He thinks. He writes. Dear Eurydice, a symphony for 12 instruments. Love, Orpheus. He slips the letter as though into a mail slot. observes the underworld. There isn't much to observe. She plays hopscotch without chalk. Every so often, the father looks at her, happy to see her, while he builds her room out of strength. She looks back at him, polite. The father has now completed the string room. Thank you. That'll do. She nods to her father. He doesn't leave. Oh, I, I suppose you want a tip. Would you draw me a bath? Yes, miss. Eurydice opens her suitcase. She is surprised to see that there's nothing inside. She sits down inside her suitcase. I love you. I'm going to find you. 
I play the saddest music now that you're gone. You know I hate writing letters, so I'll give this letter to a worm, and I hope he finds you. Love, Orpheus. Damn stones! I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I, 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 I didn't it's want them to mess it up. It's, it's, okay. it's, it's okay. I'm sorry. It's gonna be all right. Hold, Can hold. you fix it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Yes. I'll fix it right now. Don't worry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's okay, ma'am. It's okay. Well, well, but there's a letter for you. A letter? It's addressed to you. Um, there's dirt on it. Eurydice wipes the dirt off the letter. She opens it. She scrutinizes it. She does not know how to read it. She puts the letter on the ground, stands on it, and shuts her eyes. She thinks, without language for the thought. The melody, there's no place like home. Miss? What is it? Do you, do you want me to read you the letter? Read me the letter? You can't do that with your feet. Oh. Let's see. It's addressed to Eurydice. That's you. That's you? You. It says, I love you. I, I love you? It's like your tree. Tall? Green. It's like sitting in the shade. Oh. It's like sitting in the shade with no clothes on. Oh! I'm going to find you. I play the saddest music. Uh, music. It's like that. Go on. You know I hate writing letters. I'll give this letter to a worm. I hope he finds you. Love, Orpheus. 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 That word, that word, it's like, oh my God, I can't breathe. Orpheus, my husband.
sí. Dear Eurydice, last night I dreamt that we climbed Mount Olympus and we started to make love and all the sand in your hair were little faucets of water and water was coming out of them. And I looked to you and I said, why is water coming out of your hair? And you said, gravity is very compelling. Uh. <laughs> and then we jumped off and we flew through clouds and you held your knee close to your chest because you scraped down a sharp cloud. And then we fell into a salty lake. <laughs> and then I woke up, and, and the window frightened me, and I thought, Eurydice's dead. Then I thought, who is Eurydice? And the whole room started to flow, and I thought, what are people? And then my bed clothes smiled at me with a crooked green mouth, and I thought, who am I? It scares me, Eurydice. Please. Please come back. Love, Orpheus. Did you get my letters? No, you, you wrote me letters. Every day. What did they say? Oh, nothing much. The usual stuff. Could you tell me the names of, of my mother and my brothers and sisters? I don't think that's a good idea. It'll make you sad. But, but I want to know. It's a long time to be sad. I'd rather be sad. Being sad is not allowed. Act like, like a stone. stone. Teach me another word then. Ostracize. What does it mean? To exclude. The Greeks decided who to banish, and they wrote the name of the banished person on a white piece of pottery called ostracon. Ostracon. Another. Peripatetic. From the Greek. To walk slowly, speaking of weighty terms, in bare feet. Peripatetic. A, a learned fruit wandering through the snow. Another. Defunct. 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 It means dead in a very abrupt way. Not the way I died, which is slowly, but all at once. In cowboy boots. Could you tell me a story of when you were little? Let's go to your room. Uh, stories when I was little. Well, there's a time your uncle shot at me with a BB gun. And I got so mad at him, I swallowed an ale. <laughs> then, there was a time I was at a dude ranch, and I was riding a horse, and I lasted a car. The lady driving the car, she got out and spanked me. Your grandmother, she spanked me too. <laughs> do, you, do you remember that Christmas where she gave me a doll and I said, if I see one more doll, I'm going to throw up? <laughs> the grandpa was a little surprised <laughs> when he said that. Could you tell me a story about your mother? Well, the most vivid recollection I have of mother would be seeing her at parties or in the house playing piano. When she was younger, she was extremely animated. She could really play the piano. She played everything by ear. They called her Flaming Sally. Wow, I, I never saw Grammy play the piano. Well, she was never the same after my father died. My father was a very gentle man. Could you tell me a story about your father? Of course. Well, my father and I, we used to duck hunt. He called Old Frank the night before and asked, where are the ducks moving tonight? <laughs> 
Frank was a guide and a farmer. Old Frank. Good early call the ducks. But, you know, I can never bring myself to kill the poor little ducks. But you get so caught up in the fervor of it, you get as many as ten ducks! If you went over the limit, however, there are only so many ducks per person, my father would throw the ducks to the side of the creek we were paddling on and check to see if there was a game warden. If the warden was gone, he'd run back and collect the extra ducks and throw them in the back of the car. My father was never a great conversationalist, but he loved to rhapsodize about hunting. He always said, if I ever have to die, it's in a duck pond. And he did! There was something I always wanted to ask you. It was how to do something. No, it was a story. No, 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 it, it was someone's n na name. No. I'm sorry, I, I keep forgetting. Don't worry, you'll remember. We have plenty of time. Dear Eurydice, I wonder if he was reading books in the underworld. Love, Orpheus. Orpheus holds the collected works of Shakespeare with a long string attached. He lowers it slowly to the ground. is this <laughs> What are you? She is wary of it as though it might bite her. She tries to understand the book. She tries to make it do something. Are you a thing? A person? Say something! Say something!
She stands on the book, trying to read it. Come on. Come on, please. teaches Eurydice how to read. She looks over his shoulder as he reads to her aloud. We two alone will sing like birds in the cage. When thou dost ask my blessing, I'll kneel down and ask of thee forgiveness. So we'll live and pray and sing and tell old tales. For Eurydice, E, U, R, Y, yes, that's right. No, there's no last name. 
Excuse me, what are you trying to imply? God, no! I, I don't know the country. I don't know the city. And I do not know the street. Honestly, I'm not sure. Oh, it might start with the vowel. Could you just, would you mind checking, please? Uh, I would really appreciate it. Wait, what do you mean you can't search for a name without a city? Why not? Uh, all right, all right, well, thank you for your help. Oh, wait, miss, um, how do I put this? You see, um, she's dead. All right, well, thank you for your help. Um, you have a nice day as well. Don't move. I will find you. Could you tell me another story of when you were little? Of, of course. Another story. Let's see, there was my first piano recital. I was playing I Got Rhythm. I played the first few chords, but I couldn't really remember the rest. So I ran out of the room and locked myself in the bathroom. Then what happened? Then your grandmother she pulled me out of the bathroom, made me apologize to everyone in the auditorium. I never played piano after that, but I still know four chords. Let's see. Da da di da, da da di da, da da uh, di da. What are the words? I can't remember. <laughs> Let's see. Da da di da, 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 da da di da. What is that noise? Stop singing! Neither of you can carry a tune! It's awful! Dead people can't sing! I'm not a very good singer, <laughs> neither am I. The Lord of the Underworld enters on his red tricycle. Music from a heavy metal band accompanies him. His clothes and his hat are too small for him. <laughs> knock, knock! Who's there? I am the Lord of the Underworld. <laughs> Very funny. I am! Okay, okay. Prove it. I can do chin-ups inside your bones. Close your eyes. Chin-ups inside my bones. Ow, hey! See? What do you want? Whoa, Stone! You're pretty. I'm dead. You're pretty. You're young. I grow downwards like a turnip. What do you want? Are you comfortable? Comfortable? You're not itchy? No. Well, that's good. Sometimes the residents get itchy. And I scratch them. I'm not itchy. What's all this string? Oh, it's my room. Rooms are not allowed! Tell her! Rooms are not allowed! Who made your room? My father. Fathers are not allowed! Where is he? He's at work. Aw, oh, man. We'll have to dip you in the river again and make sure you're all good Please, don't. Ooh. Say that again. It's nice. 
P please don't. Say it in my ear. Please don't. I like that. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. I have a husband. Husbands are for children. You need a lover. I'll be back. See that she's comfortable. We, we will. will. Goodbye. G goodbye. 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 Can't you tell I'm growing, guys? I'm growing. <laughs> <laughs> A big storm, the sound of rain hitting a roof. If a drop of water would enter the soil at a particular angle with a particular pitch, what's the same man can't ride one note into the earth like a fireman's pole? Orpheus lowers a bucket to the ground to catch rain falling. He walks rain fall into the bucket. He tunes gets a tar, trying to make each note match the pitch of each water drop. Orpheus wonders if one particular pitch could lead him to the underworld. He wonders if one pitch would match the pitch of each water drop as it enters the earth's soil. A pitch! Eurydice, did you hear that? Another pitch! Courtesy, that one right there, that's it!
He keeps humming. The stones weep. They look at their tears, bewildered. He, he keeps humming. Who are you? I am Morpheus. I am the Lord of the Underworld. But you're so young. Don't be rude. Sorry. <laughs> so, did you like my music? No, I prefer music with a nice beat. Oh. You've come for Eurydice? Yes. And you thought singing would get you through the gates of hell? Listen here, I want my wife. What do I have to do about it? Oh, you have to do more than sing. I'm not sure I understand what you're trying to say, sir. Start walking home. Your wife just might be on the road behind you. We make it real nice here, so people want to stay. As you walk, face front, and if you look back, poof, she's gone. So I can't look at her? No. Why? Because. 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 Do you not understand me? So I look forward, and that's it? Yes. Huh. That's easy. Good. I hear him at the gates. He's come to save me. Do you want to go with him? Yes, of course. Oh, you'll be lonely, won't you? No, no. You should go to your husband. You should have grandchildren. They'll come down to meet me one day. Are you sure? You should love your family until the grapes grow dust on their purple faces. I'll take you to him. Now? It's for the best. He takes her arm. They process, arm in arm, as at a wedding. The sound of bells. They are solemn and glad. They walk. They see Orpheus up ahead. Is that him? Yes, I think so. The shoulders aren't very broad. <laughs> Can he take care of you? Are you sure? Yes. Then there's one thing you need to know. If he turns around and sees you, he'll die a second death. Those are the rules, so... Step quietly and don't cry out. I won't. Goodbye. I'll come back to you. I seem to keep dying. <laughs> don't, let them do <laughs> don't let them to be too long in the river the second time. Hold your breath. I'll look for a tree. I'll write you letters. Where will I find them? I, I don't know yet. I'll think of something. Goodbye, Eurydice. Goodbye. She takes a deep breath. She takes one big step forward. She is brave. She takes another step forward. She hesitates. All of a sudden, she is not so brave. She is afraid. <laughs> she looks back. Wait, come back. You can't go back now, Eurydice. Face forward. Keep walking. I'm afraid. Your husband is waiting for you, Eurydice. I don't recognize him. That's a stranger. Go on, it's him. I want to go home. I want my father. You're all grown up now. You have a husband. Turn, Turn around. around. Why? Because. because. That's a stupid reason. Orpheus braved the gates of hell to find you. He played the saddest music. Even we, the, the stones, stones, cried when we heard it. That's Orpheus? Yes, that's him. Where is his music? It's in your head! Orpheus walks slowly in a straight line with the focus of a tightrope walker. Eurydice moves to follow him. She follows him several steps behind. 
She takes one step for every step that Orpheus takes. She makes a decision. She increases her pace. She takes two steps for every step that Orpheus takes. She catches up to him. Orpheus! You're gonna see. A, sm a small sound ping. They are pulled apart from each other. Matter of fact, compelled. I'm sorry. Damn it, why? I don't know. You always have your hands on the third beat. Rhythm. You couldn't wait for the fourth. Remember, I tried to teach you. You always want to have the music. Now this is what happened if you just listen. When I would say downbeat, no, the downbeat, it's dangerous not to have a sense of rhythm. You lose it, you can't manage a simple beat. Why did you have to say my name, you're innocent? I'm sorry! I know we used to fight. It seems so silly now. If, 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 and ants were, were pots and pans, there'd be no need for tinkers. Why? If, if, and ants were pots and pans, there'd be no need for tinkers. You're to see. I think I see the gate, the, the stones, the boat, it all looks so familiar. The stones look happy to see me. Don't look. That's the happiest I've ever seen them. The things so we great. did. I, we went ice skating. Our home was great with I the red door. We had two dogs and two cats and two fish that died. Damn it, will you talk to me? The train looks like the opposite of a train. You're ready to see. We've known each other for centuries. I want to reminisce. Remember when you wanted your name in a song, so I put your name in a song. When I was out the gates of hell, I was singing your name over and over and over again. You're ready to see. Finally, some peace and quiet, like the old days. No music, no conversation. How about that? With Eurydice gone, it will be like a second death for me. Oh, please, sir. We're tired. Do you understand the love a father has for his daughter? Love is a big funny word. Dead people? should be seen and not heard. The father looks at the string room. He dismantles the string room. Matter of fact, there's nothing else to do. This can take time. It takes time to dismantle a room made of string. How, how does a person remember to forget? It's difficult. It's not difficult. We told you how it works. Dip yourself in the river! Dip yourself in the river. Dip yourself in the river. I need directions. Oh, that's ridiculous. There are no directions. I, I, I remember. Take Tri-State South, 294, to Route 88 West. Take Route 88 West to Route 80. You'll go over a bridge, go three miles, and you'll come to the exit from the road. Proceed three to four miles. Duck Creek Park will be on the right. Take left on Fernwood Avenue. Go straight on Fernwood, past two intersections. Go forward. Fernwood will curve to the right, leading you to Forest Road. Take left on Forest Road. Go two blocks, past the first entrance to the alley on the right. Take the second entrance. You'll go about 100 yards. Red Brick House will be on the right. Look for Illinois license plates. Go inside the house, inside the living room. Look out the window. See the lights on the Mississippi River. Take off your shoes. Walk down the hill. Go past the tree, good for climbing on the right. Cross the road. Watch for traffic. Cross the train tracks. Catfish will be sleeping in the mud on your left. Pull up your jeans, count to ten, put your feet in the river, and swim. The father dips himself in the river, a small metallic sound of forgetfulness, ping.
the sound of water. Father lies down on the ground, curled up, asleep. Where is my room? Where is my room? Answer me. It's none of our business. What are you doing here? You should be with your husband. Up there. Where is my father? Why is he sleeping? I've come back. He can't hear you. It's too late. What are you talking about? He dipped himself in the river. My father did not dip himself in the river. He, he did! We, we saw him. him! He wanted some peace and quiet! He did not! Listen, I'll teach you the words and then we'll know each other again. We'll start with my name, Eurydice. E-U-R-Y. He can't hear you. He can't see you. He can't remember you. I hate you! I've always hated you! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! L -l Listen, I'll tell you a story. He can't hear you. He can't see you. He can't remember you. Try talking in the language of stones. It's a very quiet language. Like if the pores in your face opened up and wanted to talk! S stone. Rock. Tree, rock, stone. Haven't you mourned for your father once already, young lady? Some things should be left well enough alone. To mourn twice is excessive. To mourn three times is a sin. Life is like a good meal. Only gluttons want more food when they finish their helping. Learn to be more moderate. It's weird for a dead person to be morbid. We don't like to watch it. And we don't like to see it. It makes us uncomfortable. <laughs> don't, don't cry! cry. Don't, Don't cry. cry! Learn the art of keeping busy. It's hard to keep busy when you're dead. It's, it's not, not hard. hard. We, we keep, keep busy, and we like it. We're, we're busy, busy, busy stones. Watch us work. Keeping still, keeping quiet. It's hard work to be a stone. No time for crying. No, no, no. I hate you. I've always hated you. Go ahead. Try to hit us! You'll hurt your hand! You'll break your fist! Ha ha ha! Is there a problem here? No, no sir. sir. You chose to stay with us, huh? Good. Perhaps to be my bride? I told you, you're too young. I'll be the judge of that. I've grown. Y yes, I see that. I'm ready to be a man now. I'm ready to be a man. Please leave me alone. I'll have them start preparing the satin silks. You can't refuse me. I've made my choice. I'm ready to be a man now. Can I please just have a moment to prepare myself? Don't be long. The music has already been written. Quite inaudible, you might say. A dirt-filled orchestra for my bride. Don't trouble the songs with your music, I say. A song is two dead bodies rubbing under the covers to keep warm. Well, well, well. You had better to prepare yourself. There is nothing to prepare. You had better comb your hair. You had better find a veil. I don't need a veil. I, I need a pen. Pens are forbidden. A pencil, then. Pencils, too. Damn you, I'll dip you in the river. It's too late. You're too late. A pencil.
dear Orpheus. I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. I was afraid. I am not worthy of you, but I still love you, I think. Don't try to come find me again. You would be lonely for your music. I want you to be happy. I, I want you to marry again. I'm going to write out instructions for your next wife. To my husband's next wife. Be gentle. Be sure to comb his hair when it's wet. <laughs> Never fail to notice how his face flushes pink like a bride's when you kiss him. Give him lots to eat. He gets cranky when he forgets to eat. When he is sad, kiss his forehead and I will thank you because he is a young prince and his robes are too heavy on him and his crown falls down around his ears. I'll give this letter to a worm finds you. Love, Eurydice. She puts the letter on the ground. Eurydice dips herself in the river. A small, metallic sound of forgetfulness. Ping. She lies down on the ground next to her father, curled up, asleep. Orpheus appears in the elevator. He sees Eurydice. He is happy. He forgets. He steps out of the elevator and notices a letter on the ground. He picks it up. He scrutinizes it. He can't read it. He stands on the letter. He closes his eyes. Why dost thou sit upon my grave and well dead lips to speak? Why dost thou weep upon my grave and well not let me sleep? My breast it is. As cold as clay, my breath is earthly strong. And if you kiss my cold clay lips, your days they won't be long. How often yonder gray. 